Hey, Robert, how's it going, my man? Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Timmy! How are you doing, my friend? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Scott Woodrow, all the regulars are in the house. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Uh, today, I'm going to be reading from my laptop. The reason being, um, what we're talking about is all futuristic, and I want to make sure that I say it right, and um, I'm not going to be mincing my words. So if you're on uh, watching live right now, thank you so much. I know it's um, one of those guys. <laughs> Robert, thank you so much for your time there. Good stuff. So today, I'm going to actually be reading from... Uh, my laptop because I want to make sure that we get this right. Nicholas, Nicholas Bayel, how's it going, my friend? Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I also have been informed by the guys that actually keep me safe, my legal team, uh, to say out this disclaimer. Um, you know, just so that any, if anything goes wrong with this video today, uh, we are well and truly protected. All right. So if you can indulge me while I read this, while other people are tuning in, Adam AE, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, so this is what the legal disclaimer says. I'm going to read it also towards the end, just so that we are all uh, in tune. So the views expressed in this video are my own and Live Long Digital is not liable for any loss of income or business during and after watching this 30 minute episode. Now the results you will get after this are based on individual effort and you have to put in the work um, just like the rest of us and viewer discretion is advised. There's also a legal disclaimer that protects those that are going to share this video uh, with their families and businesses thereof, all right? So I just had to put this out there uh, you never know where this thing is going to end up and people are going to start thinking that I told them uh, things that were not real. All right, because today we're talking about things that you should look out for in 2018, especially on social media. So I'm going to be talking a lot about um, a lot of brands. That's the reason why we're putting out this uh, disclaimer out there. Normally, I always uh, try not to mention anyone's brand, anyone's uh, platform. The reason is there's a lot of legal connotations behind it. All right. So now that all that gobbledygook is out of the way, um, I just want to introduce the show today. We're talking about the trends that you should be looking out for um, in the year of our Lord uh, 2018. All right. So as you would know, guys, everybody else that's tuned in right now and people that are going to be watching this in post-production, um, you know outright for a fact that I believe that every single business that's out there, every single online business, um, you know, should be uh, be profitable and enjoyable. That the people that are in those businesses should actually enjoy working in those businesses and they should actually make a profit with, um, you know, whatever they're putting out there. And I also believe that if you're a business person, you should be able to create for and relate to all of those people that you're going to be taking money off of, all right? And um, naturally, I teach a four-step system uh, that many of you are now well-versed with. It's called the Online Prosperity um, you know, Blueprint that is designed for coaches, consultants, service professionals um, like yourself to brand, market, and scale their businesses and services so that their businesses can generate a profit and they also enjoy that. Now, I also lead a team of well-seasoned digital marketing experts um, under the banner of Live Long Digital, where we help small businesses like yourself to actually grow essentially through digital marketing strategies. That's the reason why today's show is going to be of utmost importance if your business is going to uh, see it through the the year 2018. A lot of things are changing, um, you know, uh, behind the scenes. So I just wanted to bring it out there for everybody else that's watching so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Nicole Saunders, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're not driving. And also let me know when you want to be included on the Online Prosperity Show. I definitely want people to know about your tiger process and how you make people raw on social media. All right. So 
All, all that I'm really trying to say, guys, is I want to inspire you to do the things that actually inspire you yourself. All right. So I did mention a few changes. I did mention um, that a few social media platforms are going to um, you know, undergo some sort of change or some trends to look out for. I've already put out a legal disclaimer. If you haven't heard it and if you're thinking that what I'm saying is out of whack, please watch the beginning of this show and um, you will be satisfied. All right. So, right. Suit up. Changes. What changes? We were getting comfortable with what Facebook is. We were getting comfortable with what Instagram uh, looks like. We were getting comfortable with what Snapchat looks like. We were getting comfortable um, with everything else that comes along with, um, you know, the way of life that social media has, um, you know, sort of um, been presented to us. All right. But it's that time of the year again where we actually have to reflect What worked in 2017? What do we need to ditch? And what's actually coming up in 2018? Because like I said at the start of this show, guys, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. All right. So I want you to grab a cup of coffee or whatever drink you're going to indulge yourself in as we take a look at what's coming your way and you can get prepared Um, You know, for the social media trends that are coming up in 2018, because we've been gathering all this information behind the scenes. We've been checking reports and some of the strategies, we've been trying them. We've been working on them and really trying to, you know, figure out what is working, what is going to work, what do we need to teach and what do we need to go ahead with. All right. So grab a drink, grab a coffee, something you're going to need it because um, I think this one is going to be one of the most valuable videos you've ever watched from this platform. Now, Bobby Williams, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Sola Javis, thank you so much, my brother, for tuning in. Um, Everybody else that's just tuning in, can you just type in where you're logging in from so that we all understand and know who is who? And those that haven't watched the start of this video, please go back to the start when the video ends and watch it right from the start. There's a legal disclaimer that I've just put out there. All right. Now that you've grabbed your coffee, I've welcomed everybody else in the house. Today, we're talking about the trends that we should look out for. um, um, We should look out for in uh, 2018. And Mark Armstrong says, send replay. You always find it on my wall. I'm not going to send it to you, brother. All right. So before I reveal um, our findings of what's going to be happening in 2018, let's just have a recap of the trends that we sort of came across in 2017. All right. I don't know if any of you guys noticed that clients now anticipate a real time response in whatever you're saying, either it's your social media or your emails. Now the the, the, the clients that we're dealing with, um, you know, are, are, are anticipating a real time response. All right. There's also, Organic growth in in social networks like Facebook um, and Instagram has become harder and harder, especially for pages. All right. And ads have become the norm. Has that trend been fulfilled? Yes. Because we talked about that last year when we were saying these are the trends to look out for in 2017. And we also looked at marketing automation. Marketing automation has become more and more essential. All right. You now have to sort of automate all your processes. You now have to automate your lead generation. You need to automate your onboarding. All of those things have now come and passed. All right. And also one other thing that has happened in 2017, personalization has become crucial. Not only is personalization needed in, um, you know, your, your, your email marketing, even on social media, if somebody sends you a message and doesn't have your name or at least something that says that they've done their little bit of research about yourself, you know, people are no longer listening or watching or looking at messages like that, except when they're those numb people that are just sharing, um, you know, chain messages. And I really don't want them anywhere near my show. Okay. Um, things like AR, AR, VR, um, what's the other thing? Um, AI as well. And chatbots have become sort of mainstream. Uh, That's only 2017. And, you know, there's been immersive reality that's making its way, um, you know, towards marketing and everyday lives. Like I've already put out a disclaimer. We did a project once 
um, you know, for a um, local building um, contractor here. And then now they already have VR content for their customers. So can you imagine if people in the building industry are already taking up VR, you know, um, you know, virtual reality, you can imagine how smaller um, and agile businesses are going to be, you know, um, acting and doing in 2018. All right. So like I said, suit up. I'm going to be talking about the six things that we've been working at on and been trying to experiment within our business so that we can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. How excited are you that 2017 has come to an end? Are you happy with your results so far? Can you just type in in the, in the, in the comments there? Are you happy with your 2017 results so far? Alrighty, alrighty, who's on? Robert, Barbara, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Nicole, not really. Nicole, I know why. Because yesterday you confused me about the thing that you're doing now. So if you don't stick with one thing, nobody's going to know what you do. It's going to be all over the place. And uh, Nicole is just getting started. I like that. Nicole Saunders. Um, Barbara, 2017, meh. I uh, could do better. Looking forward to 2018. Good stuff. It depends on what you put in. What you put in is what you get. All right. So that's how it normally works. But I really hope that everybody is all geared for the next year, etc., etc. Right. One thing. Today I'm going to be reading from my laptop. If you can excuse me, because all of these things that I am uh, talking about are things that are futuristic. Some of them we've practiced them, so I don't quite have them in my old Beulah. Obula Oblangato. <laughs> Great stuff. One other thing that's happening right now is mobile. All right. How many of you guys have their websites mobile friendly? How many of you guys have optimized your websites for mobile? All right. Because at the end of the day, almost 60%, um, let me see here, almost 60% of users in the US and almost 76% of users in Australia, they access Facebook exclusively through a mobile. And that number is going to increase by 2020. All right. So 2018 is already part of, you know, the journey up until 2018. I mean, 2020, 2018 is the journey. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you get what I mean. So they're predicting that by 2020, um, 76% of um, Australian users are going to be accessing Facebook exclusively through their mobile device and 60% of Americans are going to be um, exclusively accessing their internet internet through a mobile device. All right. So Barbara says, yes, my website is optimized for mobile. So tick, that's one thing for sure. So you want to couple that with the fact that 80% of Facebook ads revenue is now coming from, um, you know, mobile. So you'd understand why you really need to prepare for um, for mobile. So this is what you do if you want to check if your website is mobile friendly. If you're coming in from a, a PC, you press the, 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 um, the button F12, okay? And then it gives you a portion of how your website looks like on mobile, all right? If you press F12, you will see how your website looks like on mobile. Or if you go to this email addre uh, website address, www.google.com forward slash webmasters forward slash tools forward slash mobile friendly. All right. So if you want this link, can you just type in mobile friendly and then I will send it through to you after the show. All right. So. Even more, what you need to take account uh, into account, guys, is the fact that Facebook is now one of the last social medias that is exclusively based on um, a desktop. Most of the other ones, like Instagram, uh, most of the other ones, like Snapchat, you know, all the other newer kids in the block, they didn't even bother with getting a um, desktop version. All right. Yes, Jesse Hart, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that link. All right. You see, Instagram didn't even bother to, to, to create a desktop version. Snapchat didn't even bother to create a desktop version. All right. So, you know, what's that going to tell you? So you want to make sure that your website is definitely mobile friendly and you can check. There's a link that has been put up there um, in, the, in the comments. 
And you also want to make sure that your profile is also, um, your Facebook profile is also optimized for um, being mobile friendly. Because on Facebook, you are allowed to put links to your offers. You're allowed to put links to maybe your LinkedIn or your Instagram, etc., etc. All of those things are allowed for you to do in your mobile profile. Okay, so you want to make sure that you've got that in check. You want to make sure that you've got things like that in place. Um, Abdul Rahimi, can you book a call with me? I can't just let you on my live feed because, um, yeah, the thing about me is um, these videos are going to be used as a, a video on YouTube as well. So I just want to make sure what energy are you bringing in onto my show. Sorry about that. Thanks for um, accepting. Um, what is it you want to talk about, Abdul? I just want to figure out what your story is because it will mess up my show and I don't want that. Uh, Chris says, do you use a social media management software? Yes, um, we normally do, but I've got a team behind the scenes, so I can't really say that um whatever team there's there's um um uh oh, what what other tools do they use let me I, I can't endorse any tools sorry chris um but i can talk to you a little bit later on all right okay so there we go another thing that you need to look out for in 2018 is personalization all right people now want stuff that actually speaks to them is about them and talks directly to them, all right? Three out of every sort of four users that are out there are now frustrated when an incorrect, um, you know, when incorrect content has been, um, you know, sent out there and it doesn't spell out their name, etc., etc. Exactly, that one that Jesse just wrote out there, he's the one, um, um, it, it, it's, it's the one that you can use. Abdul Rahim, I just want to listen to your advices. Just listen in the audience like everybody else is doing. Thanks. Thanks for trying. Thanks for trying. All right. So people now want things that are personalized. All right. They want um, content that is relevant to their needs, content that is relevant to their taste. All right. You know what has spoiled them? What has spoiled them is the fact that Facebook now delivers ads that are specific to that person and email marketing has also been championing, um, you know, specific um, content. You know, when you get an email and it says, good morning, Jesse, how are you doing? As if the, the sender already knows, um, you know, who, who, who you are, et cetera, et cetera. So this also looks like a trend that's about to become a norm on social media too. So you can no longer spray and pray with your marketing. And how do we know this? All right, most social networks are improving their analytics. All right, Facebook actually now knows, you know, where you live, how you live, and who you live with. All right, so they're empowering marketers with all these tools to be, you know, even more precise with their targeting. It's no longer relevant for you to go out and say you your target audience is is um, is the age group from 25 to 35. You know why? Because I'm 34 years old right now, and let's say you are 25. We have totally different needs. I've got kids. You probably don't have kids. Um, I, I drive three cars. You probably drive one car. So what we need and what you choose to live your lifestyle is totally different. So that 10-year age gap is now becoming irrelevant. You know why? Because people are maturing in a different, um, you know, times. And it's no longer like a linear way that you grow up, you have kids, and then you get married. Some people are doing it earlier, faster, or, or even a lot more quicker. You know what I mean? So they're going beyond age. They're going beyond gender for your buyer persona. All of that is now already old news. So if your buyer persona right now is, is you're speaking to women that are between the age group of 19 to 29, you've already lost. Because there's a 29-year-old who's a career woman who is not, you know, doing the same things or thinking the same way as a 19-year-old, but you're sending the same message to, the, to those people, all right? So you want to tap into their lifestyles. Social media is going to be tapping into their passions with a lot of accuracy, and there's definitely something that you, um, this is something that's going to reshape how we market to people in general, not just on social media. Uh, Robert says, I'm a young man in an older shell, currently 50, but not counting. All right, good stuff. Yeah, but then 
the 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 marketing people people that are marketing to you probably already know a lot more about you than you are willing to 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 let off this is a brand new world all right so it's now relevant that you know whatever content you're putting out there has to be personalized and it's a must because if you're not doing that your competition is doing it so you want to make sure that it it it, it all ties in people are not being held hostage in your uh, mailing list people are not being held hostage in your friend list if people no longer understand what the, you're talking about don't hold them hostage in your groups because you know it, it's it's no longer a viable option all right this actually brings me to the next point um which is um about social media trends for 2018 social listening social listening is no longer an option. Now you really 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 need to know who you are speaking to. You know? I'm sure you already know that social media is a two-way street. It's no longer speaking to a brand and and and, and you speaking to them. No, 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 no. It's now the co- the consumer and the 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 you know, the business owner communicating mano y mano. All right? So you can't just simply automate the delivery of your posts and forget about it. People need to be interacted with. People need to be spoken to. You need to engage. You need to respond. You need to ask questions. You need to identify the influencers in your in your you know you know you know in your industry and so on. So social listening, you know, I'm not saying go in there and start consuming all the content that out there, but you know, it just helps you to get further than most people will. It shall. It will help you to actually deliver the right kind of message. at the right kind of time to the right kind of audience. All right? Now we're living in a in a 24 hour box. What are you doing to keep your um you know your brand top of mind to your prospects? So you got to be listening to what are they listening to, who are they watching and 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 how are they contributing and how do they want to be spoken to? That's a trend you got to look out for um you know in 2018. So, you know, more than <clears throat> more than just monitoring um social listening is 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 also going to help you understand um you know um what truly matters to your audience it's no longer a matter of you delivering what you think people want no people have to tell you what they want and you come back and deliver it to them Do you know what i mean whether you need to be acknowledging you know a piece of recent news or just to speak about something people need to understand that they are being understood and like what uh, Scott is saying listening equals understanding exactly so that's what social listening is going to be there's a lot of tools that you can utilize in order for you to actually um listen to to and get the scoop of what your customers are actually yearning for better yet you can actually now start using um you know this scoop to steal your your competitor's thunder and in the end It's now going to be about reaction and speed in 2018. How well prepared are you in your game to get those new leads when they're coming in? One of the trends that a lot of people need to be checking in on is how all these social medias are morphing into one thing. All right? Like I said in my disclaimer a little bit earlier on, these views are just my views, so do not take this verbatim. and whatever loss of income that's going to be incurred after watching this video live long digital is not liable for it okay so deb how are you going roy thank you so much for tuning in all right i don't know if you've noticed what happened in 2017 2016 like the biggest internet internet heist happened in front of our eyes when facebook stole everything else from snapchat I I think you guys would have noticed it and then put it all in Instagram and put it all in 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 the Facebook main um you know main social platform. So each social network is working harder and harder to become a one-stop shop for its users. All right? They don't want you to go anywhere else once you're in Facebook or once you're in um Instagram or once you're in WhatsApp or once you're in Snapchat. All right? So they want to be the one-stop shop for their customers and they also want to be the one stop spend for all their marketers so everyone is working on it even uh, linkedin has come up with video linkedin has come up with all these things youtube is also trying to keep people within their own ecosystem 
This is why all these social media uh, platforms are borrowing similar features from each other. You know, Instagram introduced um, Instagram stories, which was, you know, something that we was introduced by Snapchat. And they drew a lot of that user base from Snapchat into Instagram. And recently Twitter, I think they introduced that they are going to expand their 140 character to a 280 character tweet. Just so that all that micro content can be expanded so that you have many places for you to micro blog or to put your content on. You know, even though there's Twitter wars, uh, Snapchat wars, Instagram wars, or whatever it is, it's here to, to stay. So you can't ignore it. So you want to choose a digital marketing channel that you, you can, you can, you know, you, you, you settle in and be known in there so that your customers actually know who you are and know where to find you. And if you watch any of these videos every single time, I, I always advise you and, and, and I always advise business owners to not stretch themselves too thin on these social media platforms. So when you choose one digital sort of when you choose a digital marketing channel or when you choose a, a social media channel or whatever network you're going to be choosing, make sure you give it your best. All right. Don't just dabble in it. Make sure if it's going to be a base, make that your thing in 2018. You know, and be be sure to, to exploit all the new features that are coming in. Even if it means just taking a 10 second video, you know, of your day or showing your customers what it is that you're doing, you, they appreciate that. You know why? Because somebody else in you your know, competition is doing that too. And Jesse says, be selective, make quality content, not quantitative. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. So if you're based in one particular platform, make sure you utilize all the nooks and crannies that it has. If you base yourself in Facebook, make sure you're on Facebook story, make sure you're on, on Messenger, make sure you're using Messenger stories as well. Make sure you're using all the links that you have in your profile. Make sure you utilize, even if you make your profile into a video, all the things that they use for you, I mean, they give you so that you can utilize to get in, in front of your customers. Do that. Because guess what? You don't have to be everywhere, but you have to make sure that your efforts and your return of investment is, you know, justifiable. I'm not saying you can't test other networks, but be known to be somewhere, find a base for yourself and make sure that you are the best in your industry in that, in, in, in on, on, on that platform. All right. And one other thing we shouldn't forget is video guys. Next year, 2018, video will continue to reign supreme. Either it's going to be Facebook Live like this, either it's going to be um, the micro blog um, video, you know, your, your Instagram stories, um, your, um, you know, the, your, 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 what do you call it? Your page cover photo is now a video as well. All of those things should be telling you that video is coming to stay. And recently, Facebook just purchased um, rights to, you know, you know, have their own sort of TV, um, you know, offshoot of, of YouTube called Facebook watch. I'm waiting for that to be, um, opened up to, to, to Australia so that this lunch and learn can be, um, uh, um, you know, an, um, a show that is directly viewed from Facebook watch. All right. So you want to make sure that your video game is strong. There's other companies like Lumen5.com that are helping you create video from your blogs. All right. So you want to look into all of those things because speaking of Instagram stories and Facebook messenger stories, all of those micro blogs are touch points in which your customers can see your authenticity, can actually get to hear more of what you have to offer. You know? And Instagram stories, it turns out, are actually really good for companies to implement. 
You know, a lot more people that I know, they're actually utilizing them. And it's a trend that is expected to grow in 2018. So it's no longer about the 16-year-olds anymore that are just taking selfies about themselves during the day. You, as a business, you also need to be, um, you know, doing the, you know, that microblogging. Show people little tidbits of your day so that they know that you've got their best interests at heart. And the same goes for, you know, videos on social media network. They say a picture says a thousand words, right? Uh, is it? I don't know. Whatever it is. A, pi a picture. A picture says a thousand words, then a video should say 10,000. Or whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about. All right? So from these live broadcasts that we're doing, funny videos, whatever viral content you're going to try and put out there, you know, and whatever motion picture you can put out there, social media um, users are now captivated. If you don't have a video strategy, you got to start looking into one. It's high time you created one for 2018 because people are now getting lazier and lazier to read. So you want to make sure that you turn all those blogs into videos or whichever way you can do it or just micro Facebook lunch and learns or videos like this. I'm not saying you have to show up every single day at, at 2 p.m. for 30 minutes, but you've got to be in front of the camera. The more airtime you have in 2018, the closer you are to the bank. All right. And in the process, if you can't do videos on your own, try and get influencers uh, to help you out. You know, because influencer marketing is now taking over all social media networks. So you can, you can ask your customers to do videos for you, explaining what it is that you've helped them with. You can interview your customers and then they give out um, all the, the, the information for you. And Chris says, do you think videos will get shorter? <clears throat> Chris, I'll tell you something about video. You, watch, you can go and watch a, a movie for one hour or you can watch a one minute video that would bore you to death. So it's all about content. It's not about quantity. It's not about length. It's not about whatever it is. It's about content. Are you saying the things that your customers really need to hear at that particular moment? We can sit down and watch a documentary for two hours and nobody complains. People watch movies for an hour and a half. You know, people watch episodes. So it's how you pack your content, how you put it all together. Are people understanding you? Is the video quality good? Is the sound good? This is the microphone I'm using for this show right now. It's all just tapped into the phone and I'm using the microphone here. You know why? Because that's how you get really good quality sound. All right. We're now slowly getting into... Um, you know, um, um, a, 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 a position where the people that were born in 1995, 1996, I think they're called the Gen Z people. We need to be checking them out. You know why? Because now they're about to be 22. They're about to be 23. They're adults now. And guess what happened to these people? They grew up knowing nothing about a telephone that you hold in your hand like this. They grew up knowing nothing about dial-up. They grew up with technology. So these Gen Z people, they're currently the demographic that, you know, everyone's attention is turning into. Millennials are old now. You know, they had their moments. They had their time of bragging, etc., etc. Nobody cares about them anymore. People are now focusing on Gen Z and by the time we get to 2018, those are the people that are going to be part of the people you're going to be attracting. 22 year olds, 23 year olds, which means many of them have already sort of entered the workforce. They're the ones that are now the bosses. They're the ones that are now the entrepreneurs. If they haven't entered, many of them will be entering soon. All right. So guess what happens in 2018, these Gen Zs, they have a larger purchasing power. You know, they're now starting to receive a lot of attention from, you know, all these social media experts, all these marketers, all these businesses. This is the first generation, the Gen Zs, the people that were born from 1994, 95, 96, 97. They were the first digital natives. So you understand that they know their gadgets, their, their iPads, they know their apps like the back of their hand. 
So you got to make sure that, you know, they, they, their moms were going to work and they were watching vines on phones by the time they were, they were, they were breastfeeding. You know, so they entered a world of technology and, you know, they, they are going to demand more. So you want to take them into consideration. They're looking for sustainable brands. They're looking for eco activists. They're not looking for social involvement. So in a nutshell, they will buy from brands that actually share their interests. They're not going to buy from a brand just because it's tried and trusted. They're going to buy from a brand just because of how it represents itself online. All right. So that's what we got to look out for. So all you need to now start getting influencers that are already in that sort of range. All the used to bees don't make any honey anymore. If you didn't make any money from millennials, forget about them. Go for the Gen Z. Because the millennials already have their suppliers right now. Unless they're retarded. Do you know what I mean? So if you haven't tapped into that potential, now is the time to start. Start recruiting them. Start getting them to know who you are. Start getting them to know who your brand is. Because for the next 10 years, those are the people that are actually going to be um, you know, helping you with your business there. All right. So those are some of the social trends that I'm, I've been looking at. They might sound intimidating, um, you know, but if you enjoyed this show, please share this with your friends and relatives and whoever you think might find value in this. Um, thank you so much for those that participated. And once again, I'm just going to read out the disclaimer that the views that have been expressed in this show are my own and Live Long Digital is not liable for the loss of income um, for your business during and after watching this video. All right. And the results that you will get are based on the effort that you're going to put in. All right. So whatever I say, do not take verbatim and viewer discretion is advised. Also, there's a legal disclaimer for those that... Um, have shared this video, their families and their businesses and thereof. All right. In the meantime, I really, really appreciate you guys for all the work that we've been doing. 2018 is going to be an explosive year for all of us, especially for the people that are, you know, really putting in the work. All right. So if your social media, um, you know, or your digital marketing is out of whack, you know what I mean? And you want experts in your corner, why not just contact us? Send me an email, send me a message. I really want to help you guys to be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Now, this has been Prosper, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I really hope you're going to have a fantastic rest of the day. And in the meantime, oh, yeah, 37 minutes. Wow, that's a long one. Thank you so much for your time.